Witam Państwa bardzo serdecznie. Data Romańska to już nasze 11 Myszyn Toruń. Odsunęłam, tak. Mamy tutaj doskonałego doradcę od spraw dźwięku, panią Beatę Stemską. Zachęcam gorąco do zapoznania osobistego. Ma bardzo dużo doświadczeń, jeśli chodzi o sprawy muzyczne, ale nie tylko. Jest również geekiem, ponieważ należy do społeczności Geek Girls Carrots. Witamy pozostałych przybyszy, którzy powoli nadchodzą. Zostali przyzwyczajeni przez nas do tego, że zawsze rozpoczynamy nasze Myszyn Toruń z małym poślizgiem. Tym razem postaramy się być na czas, gdyż już jak widzicie tutaj za mną, może nie widać do końca, jest Patrick, który za chwileczkę opowie nam historię swojej drogi ku przedsiębiorczości. Rodzinny biznes, który przejął już trzyma, że tak powiem, w ręku. Jest to branża piwowarska. Na temat Patryka opowie jego znajomy, bliski przyjaciel, również Patryk. Patryk Young, również założyciel Mission Toruń. Proszę bardzo. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, Patrick. How are you this evening? Very good, thank you. Nice to see you. Uh, I'm, I'm just holding up in the air so you can see it. This is our new beer in, uh, as part of the, the Mission Torun family of beers, which is Hades, uh, which is a Russian imperial stout. Quite magnificent, available this evening, and in fact, I can tell you the first batch has already sold out. So obviously, we know that Brovar Olemp, run by Marcin Ostajewski, one of our alumni who cannot be here this evening, unfortunately, because he's in Warsaw, is doing very well. Congratulations to him. It falls to me to invite you to listen now to a dear friend of mine, uh, a good friend I've known for well over a decade. He used to run the South African Futures Exchange. He ran the European Climate Exchange. He's had all manner of exciting and interesting jobs in finance. But at the moment, he's on a very, very interesting sojourn, not in technical, tricky investment things, but something we can all relate to, ladies and gentlemen, beer. And therefore, Patrick, who is on the Isle of Wight, just to the south of mainland UK, is going to talk to us about the Goddard's Family Brewery and give us a few insights into life as a craft brewer in the United Kingdom. Patrick, take it away, please. Uh, well, thank you, Patrick, uh, for your introduction and uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, have a very brief talk to you all about uh, our small brewery here on the Isle of Wight. Um, um, I'm sure that uh, talking to uh, talking to you uh, that it's it's very difficult to relate to uh, the way that you might be operating at the moment in Poland. But the the, the wonderful business that I'm involved in now is a small family brewery. We have been going for just over 21 years. Um, it is a family business started by my father-in-law uh, on the back of some pretty uh, so, some adversity. Uh, he had recently lost uh, a tremendous amount of money, all of his family's money, um, in, a, in a very difficult uh, set of circumstances. But he enjoyed the alcohol business, and uh, so he started again. He picked himself up. Uh, and he started this brewery, which I'm now running. Um, unusually for, for a brewery, we, we only make beer. Uh, we don't sell other people's products. Um, uh, and unusually for the United Kingdom market, we also don't own pubs. Um, the, the United Kingdom alcohol market is a very interesting market uh, in that it is it is very controlled by a small number of large companies, large brewers who tend to uh, own, the, own the pub estates that, they, that sell their products and therefore they restrict anybody else from being able to sell beer in their, in their, in their pubs. 
so when I um, so when you walk into a pub in the UK, you probably won't know who it's owned by, but it will probably be owned by a group such as Youngs, uh, such as Punch Taverns or Enterprise Inns, and these are organisations that own four or five thousand pubs, um, but they don't necessarily display their branding. So for small craft brewers like ourselves, it's a very uh, difficult segment to get involved in and to find a route to market. But we, are, uh, we have a very a small set of products, small set of beers, um, which basically are only four main core brands, um, which are delicious. Um, that's why I'm drinking one of them now. This one is our latest one called White Squirrel. Um, but we are a small business, eight employees, uh, two people brewing the beer, a head brewer and an assistant brewer, two people delivering the beer to the marketplace, uh, known as Drayman, um, two people sort of selling and marketing and trying to develop the community around the beer, and then two people looking after the accounts and administration and making sure that when we do sell beer, that we uh, receive uh, some uh, receive our fair rewards for it. Um, I suppose one of the things that I found very interesting, moving from the fast moving, uh, moving from the, the financial markets where you are selling um, ideas and selling uh, products which have no real sort of substance to them in many ways, I found it very gratifying to be involved in a business where you make a product, you uh, sell it, uh, and, and uh, you sell it, and you feel great pride in what you have done. Um, obviously, with beer, there are there are different tastes that you're appealing to, um, and nobody's, uh, you know, you, some people will just not like your beer, whatever you do to it, whereas other people will um, often like your beer irrespective of what you do to it. So it's a, but it's a lovely business to be in. Um, it's a business that is uh, very satisfying. It's very easy to feel great pride about. I think when people talk about craft brewers, very often what they imagine is people who are trying new beers or new products all the time. And whilst we uh, do like to, to be involved in, in innovating and trying new products, really the core for, people, for, for an organization like ourselves is that we need to be producing consistent quality beer. Consistent quality beer. So if you have a pint of, uh, of this beer, which is called White Squirrel um, today, and then you have another pint of it in, in, in three months' time, that it has to taste exactly the same. And that's really a process uh, of our head brewer who is uh, who's very careful and very cautious, but taking the base ingredients from beer and making sure we, we, we treat them the same each time, ensuring scrupulous levels of, of cleanliness uh, and hygiene in terms of the way that we, we manage the beer so that when it arrives in a pub, it always tastes the same. There's no point in coming up with a great recipe for a fabulous beer if the next time person, a person tastes it, it's slightly different. So consistency and quality are much, probably much more important uh, attributes to have than uh, innovation. Innovation is nice, but really it's consistency and quality that really drives a business like ours and allows us to find a niche in the market and to, to hopefully um, develop that niche over time. The other thing that I found very interesting coming into a business like this, and it's not a business like in the financial markets where, where you, you, know, you can connect via computers and, uh, uh, and deal with people almost anywhere in the world. In a business like this, it's incredibly important that you can deliver the beer. Your distribution of the beer is very, very important, and there's no point in selling to somebody today a one-off sale because you know really one-off sales are meaningless. What you are looking for is to develop a long-term relationship with somebody who will be selling your beer today, tomorrow, next week, next year, and in 10 years' time. 
So again, making sure that you are selling to people who you are able to deliver to is, uh, you know, this sounds like a very simple concept, but it's, it, 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 you know, when I first joined, I had uh, great ambitions to sell beer throughout London and to make, uh, you know, make sure that the 10 million people who live in London had access to our beer. But really, that's a that, that aspiration has been hard to um, fulfill because you know getting the beer there and making sure that we can get it there each time is, is very very difficult. So uh, getting your distribution channels set up and managed well is 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 clearly very important. I think the other thing that we we try and focus on a lot, and I think it's something that as a small brewer. Uh, you have a have a, a competitive advantage over the large corporate firms is that we try very hard to make sure that we are partnering with our customers so the people who are buying our beer uh, and selling it on to to the end end clients that they are people that we provide great service to uh, we are we empathize with them in terms of how they they manage their businesses and we work and try and find ways to work with them to promote their businesses and also to promote, therefore, the drinking of our beer as well. So we try and find, you know, I think compared to large corporate brewers who are selling, you know, millions of pi millions of uh, beers all the time, they don't have that personal touch, whereas we do. And if somebody has an issue, whether it be uh, a problem with a delivery or a problem with a customer or a, uh, a you know they have a, a special occasion in which they need to manage we're able to be flexible we know our customers very well and we are able to um, support them in what they're doing just one one uh, one trend that I should t tell you about and which is is possibly interesting to to uh, Polish companies thinking about uh, exporting to the UK is that there is a, a very diff definite drive towards um, bottled beers. As a brewery here on the Isle of Wight, we sell we, 80% of the beer that we sell, we sell in casks. So we sell them to pubs who pour, pour, pour the beer in pints. About 20% of what we sell, we sell in bottles. Um, we have, uh, oh, sorry wonderful um, bottles of beer, uh, 500 ml bottles of beer, um, which are very popular with tourists, but again very important to us is the supermarket uh, um, environment. A lot of people are buying craft beers from the supermarket, um, taking them home and drinking uh, at home, and so, and that's a market where it's almost irrelevant where the beer comes from. If it's, if it's well packaged, if you've got a good brand and you've got a good product, uh, you will you, know, you have an opportunity to do huge volumes through the supermarket environment um, relatively easily. I have to say that uh, the supermarkets are, are very uh, um, are very good at getting aggressive prices from you if they want to deal with you. But again, those are decisions that you need to make as a small business. Um, whether you want to deal with with those types of customers, um, from a volume point of view, they are fabulously good. Although, again, from a pricing point of view, uh, it can be very difficult to to uh, to justify why you are why you are working on very tiny margins. And then, lastly, I think um, just one one of the fun sides of our business is that we are. Um, because we are a small company, only eight people, um, we have a, we have a, I think that uh, all of my team will tell you that they love coming to work every day. Um, and I can tell you, and I'm sure Patrick uh, will pass on from his, his history, that uh, in some of the much more financially rewarding businesses that I've worked in in the past, um, just that sense of fun, uh, that you have in a small business which you own or which you have a very uh, inherent uh, interest in, it, it, it is a great feeling being involved in a small business like this. We do fun things. Um, we've just started a loyalty club 
um, and um, and I I hope this translates uh, to Polish, uh, or if you speak English, then then hopefully it will translate. But because I, my my the brewery is called Goddard's, which starts with a G, um, the loyalty club is 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 branded as uh, you become you people sign up to become a dog, which is a drinker of Goddard's. Um, and, and so we have a dog club, which we are developing. Um, and that dog, dog club is a sort of loyalty scheme. And it allows us to do all sorts of uh, interesting things around the dog theme. Um, so we have signs outside pubs that say, uh, dogs welcome, um, uh, discounts for dogs. Um, and we have a, an annual dog show, which is when we get all of the members of the loyalty club together and we give them free beer and free wine, or, or a free, free food, uh, a, a, and we have lots of fun together. Um, a, and even if we want to be very risky, um, we, we can have um, uh, events where we, have, we get the dogs together in car parks um, and they are known as dogging events. Um, and um, you know, so we have lots of fun. We have we have a fun attitude to what we do. Uh, we work very closely with our own customers. We try and build loyalty, and uh... and on. Fortunately, it looks as if a very large. I can only tell them how just got him. Oh no, here he is. Oh, have you lost me? Yeah, we lost you for a couple of minutes. We thought you'd been eaten by a very alcoholic hound. You were just talking about dogging. <laughs> Carry on, Patrick. Ah, no, we've lost you again. Oops. Shall we try and have a quick reconnection? Gives us a good time to say, oh, hello to everybody. There's lots more people have arrived since I was at the back of the room. Hello. Good to see you. Hello, uh, I'm sorry. Was I rabbiting on too much? No, 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 you're just fine. We just thought a large Alsatian had attacked you and savaged you because you were talking about dogs and brewing. That was <laughs> all. Right, Patrick, carry on, please. Thank you very much. Sorry, so I think I was probably coming to a conclusion, but... Um, you know, really, um, I, you know, what I was trying to say is that we have a, a huge amount of fun in this business. Um, again, I would, uh, you know, I would urge anybody involved in in entrepreneurial activity to to to, to try and uh, get into this uh, field where you can have control over your destiny. You know, we 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 don't take ourselves very seriously. Um, we we make beer. I mean, how serious can you be about that? We want to make really good beer, um, but we want to have fun relationships with our. Uh, we want to have a fun time. Um, I'm just going to pick up my my iPad and show you some of our, our our marketing material, which is pretty pretty. I mean, it's pretty basic. But um, so we have things like uh, we have. Oops, sorry, I'm going to put my hand over the camera. There we go. We have sort of drip mats. Uh, or mats that go on the bar which show our logo and where we put, you know, we write in the sand. Um, we we show people, oops, sorry, we show people how to to you know the different types of ingredients in beer and we put these up on the shelves. Um, we sell beer. This is our uh, new newly branded bottles which are uh, um, rather nice. We sell beer in different sized cans. That, you know, making beer, you, 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 and it, and I'm just going to show you out of the window of our because I, I wanted to take you into the brewery, but unfortunately our Wi-Fi doesn't seem to work in there. But this is what a brewery yard looks like. There are our vans, um, it, all the casks and things like, like that outside. Um, you know, we have a very simple and very um, uh, easy setup. Um, I'm also just going to, just to make you uh, jealous, show you outside uh, the front door, which is, you know, that's the view out of my office um, uh, onto a beautiful farmhouse in the middle of the English countryside. So, um, sorry to show you that. Uh, oh, wait, now I'm now going to try and reverse the camera, which I'll probably do badly. Oh, no, I won't. There we go. 
Now you're back on me, me drinking beer. I would be very happy to uh, answer any questions or to uh, talk to you uh, and give you other directions. Patrick, thank you very much. That was very elucidating. I have to say you have a nicer view out of your window than we do in our basement cafe, uh, <laughs> if nothing else. Now, ladies and gentlemen, do we have any... Thank you. Do we have any questions at this juncture? I actually had one I was going to start with, which was, I think people aren't used to the idea that there are a few sort of outlying islands from the UK, and you're on yeah. the Isle of Wight, so you're already a little bit withdrawn from civilization, as it were. Um, how does that affect you in terms of distribution, dealing with the clients, and so on? It's a, it's, it's a very interesting one, Patrick. We, we sell... 70% of everything I sell, I sell all on the island, 30% um, on the mainland, uh, or North Island as we call it here. Um, um, we, it, the, the, the sea crossing between the Isle of Wight and the UK is apparently the most expensive sea crossing anywhere in the world. So it is quite a hindrance to delivery, um, but it's a... It's also our USP is the fact that we are from this funny little island uh, on the south coast. So we, we, we you know, it, it is an impediment to our business growth in some ways, but at the same time, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a known challenge. It's a challenge that we have to deal with, um, and we find distribution agreements uh, and often work with wholesalers to try and uh, palletize what we send out to other parts of the country. So we try and group it together as much as possible. Fascinating. And uh, I hadn't realized it was quite that expensive, although it's been a few years since I've taken that particular journey. Now, do we have someone else has a, has a question so that it's not just Patrick? You can ask in Polish and we can translate it if you're shy. It's not a problem. Um, Bata, you had a question. Go for it. Bata's going to ask a question. Hello, Patrick. Hello again. Hello, Patrick. My question is related to your team because you've told me there is only eight people working. Yes. And I was wondering uh, who's the copywriter because you presented quite a good material and, uh, you know, your campaign is very interesting. We've got some people who are dealing with the campaign and uh, marketing and social media. So I was wondering who's uh, dealing with you uh, with it in your company thank you Beata. it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's quite a new area for us because again i came from a very this is a traditional brewery with very little social pres social media presence um, uh, and so uh, in fact it is my wife henrietta who is who is um, starting to develop our social media presence who is um, spending more time on getting us connected to people. Um, again, in terms of our websites and things like that, we, we you know, we, what, what are the real joys of this, this industry and being uh, involved in your own business is that we've tried to, tried to avoid the very serious uh, sort of corporate profiling type of things. We have quite a lot of fun with the way that we operate. You know, we are conscious that in terms of social media that you, you, you can destroy a reputation very, very carefully. So internally within the office, we have a policy that um, nothing should go onto social media um, until four eyes have looked at it. So at least two people must have looked at everything that we put onto social media beforehand just to make sure we don't make any very silly mistakes. But uh, from our point of view, we just, uh, it's a small, again, there's uh, Henrietta, my wife, who, who manages most, most of that side, um, and, but she's supported by the rest of the team, and we all have uh, uh, young, youngsters around us who, who, who tell us, uh, give us, give us hints as to how to do things um, differently and in a more, you know, uh, in a more uh, up-to-date manner. Um, so we get lots of advice and input from, uh, in my case, my children, um, uh, but in, from other members of the team as well. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Okay. 
just a final question I would like to ask. When will we be able to drink your beer in Poland? <laughs> That's a very good question, Beata. You, 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 you'd be well trained or whatever the expression is. We, we, at the moment, we, uh, we export very little of our beer. Uh, and, I, and I have to be honest with you that I, you know, I don't hold huge ambitions for that type of growth. Um, as Patrick will tell you, I have, I have run and um, sold a couple of businesses in my life um, and this business is not one that I want to sell. I, so my growth ambitions are very modest. Um, I want to still be doing this in 25 years time. Um, so I'm not uh, pushing for immediate growth. I want long term growth in what we do. Gentle. Uh, gently growing our brand. Um, so I, I'm sorry to say uh, that I don't think we will be available in Poland um, very immediately, but if there is anybody in the audience who thinks um, they would like to act as our agent, then, then please drop us an email um, and I would happily try and accommodate. Thank you very much, Patrick. Okay, I think uh, this is all we would like to ask you today. Very, thank you very much uh, for your very good insight into brewery, and thank, thank you for showing us your marketing uh, and advertisement uh, campaigns. And um, we'll uh, have to go now to continue in Polish, so you're okay. dismissed to drink your beer and enjoy it. Cheers to you. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Teraz y, przejdziemy do y, osób, które związane z Mission Forum są już od y, dłuższego czasu. Y, osoba, y, która zazwyczaj pojawiała się za sceną, chociaż y, miała też swój moment y, w trakcie Mission y, przedstawiała naszych prelegentów. Y, jest to Ewelina Wojciechowska. Pozostałe osoby pozwolę przedstawić Ewelinie, 